across these plains and prairies, Rocky Mountain highs, fade off into the distance like ghost riders in the sky. Black smoke and white line, steel horses side by side. It's more than just a living, y'all. Hell, it's our way of life. We're the last of the cowboys. All right, all right, all right. We are. Ooh, man, what a day. This day's been one of them days. Started off real great. I thought everything was going to be great all day long, and man, it ended up being 7.30 at night before I got stopped tonight. But we are in just north of Toledo, or just south of Toledo, Ohio, and Perrysburg, Ohio right now. Uh, this is where I ended up for the day. That's <laughs> an eight-hour ride to my house, and I drove for... 10 hours I believe and I'm still three hours away <laughs> so uh, this has been one of them days routing was uh, routing was a big one today we're gonna talk about that here in a minute because there's there's some specific things I want to talk about but uh, figured I'd jump out here show you what we got on gotta forget I gotta remember to turn my radio off when I'm doing this stuff but figured I'd jump out and show you the load here um, I wasn't able to film this morning uh, number one, it was raining. Number two, there was a lot of trucks and everybody was kind of in a hurry. So we were trying to just do our thing, get out of there. I didn't want to spend too much time messing with cameras. So uh, here we are, got done tonight. And I figured I'd jump out here and show you the load real quick. This is a good one. This is a nice, good looking load. We don't get too many of these. Uh, I haul a lot of articulated dump trucks, but I don't haul very many John Deere. So this is uh, it's a pretty good looking load. This is what we got right here. This is a John Deere 410 articulated dump truck. It's got some weight to it. This, I believe, I believe this thing is the equivalent of a 745 cat articulated dump truck. Based on weight, dimensions, and all that stuff, they're very similar. So I believe this is this is the this is the John Deere version of the 745 Cat, so it is a uh, pretty good load, nice and easy. I like loading these things, they, you know, they drive right up on you. This one required outriggers, you're going to see that here in a second, so I, got, I know where my outriggers got to be placed because, you know, <laughs> these videos help me out. So, uh, what we got going here is, this thing weighs in at just under 75,000 pounds, and I'll put up a scale ticket here. A little difficult getting the uh, getting the axle weights right in a couple of states because they won't give me quite as much as I needed. But playing around with it a little bit, we ended up getting it, and we're good to go. So um, here's what we got going on. What I did for securement back here, I ran two chains all the way across, going through their tie down points. These go all the way across. We'll get full credit for those two. Got our, our flags on the outside. This was a little bit interesting right here, um, the way we had to do this. I really was, I was hoping this one was gonna be like the Scorpion where they had the lip right here and I could just tie it from axle to axle or to rim to rim, but it does not have that. So I, I hooked into underneath the, um, whatever these things are called, hooked in there and it wasn't quite, the bungee wouldn't stretch quite enough to get to the chain up here, so I ended up grabbing another bungee and just running it right around my own and hooking it up there. Did the job, got the flag on there. Got our, obviously got our outriggers out. Um, again, <laughs> like I said a minute ago, the reason that, uh, the way that I got these outrigger placed is based purely on a video from before. I looked it up to see where I had them, put them out there. They probably could have been we could have gone back one more with this model instead of starting at the the third outrigger I could have put that one and had the board right here and that would have been maybe a little bit better on this one but either way we were gonna end up with either this the center of this axle being right on it or the center of this axle being on the outside edge so either way it was gonna end up exactly the same so I just left it where it was and this worked out really good. 
pretty good. <coughs> Got pretty lucky there. Back ones. I, I kind of wish... I wish Fontaine in the front they have a outrigger bracket that I can put a separate outrigger on that I carry with me. I don't know why they didn't put that in the back right here because that would be awfully nice to have and give a little bit more support for that wood to be back here instead of there because it ends up sticking up back there because all the pressure is way back here at the very end. But I didn't design the trailer so and they don't uh they don't seem to take suggestions from me so you know uh what we got going on in the middle here you'll see on the other side we ended up putting in the brace so we didn't technically need to have any sort of chain in the middle however for weight we absolutely needed another securement point in a couple different places so that's why i ended up putting these on here so what i got going here same as usual i did i hooked right around their tie down point get right down right down this is one chain two binders on this one and then one chain two binders on this one so we got two more chains right there so we got two chains in the front two chains in the back and then or in the middle and then these ones here the way i did this in order to get full credit for these because you know normally normally we take these things and um x them and I needed to get full credit for them so to make the weight rating right. So what I did there to get full credit for it was I hooked here, went up through the other side and down to that portion of the trailer right there. So this actually goes all the way across. Even though it looks like an X chain in the back, it goes all the way across. So we do get full credit for that. So I get full credit for both of these chains back here. I did this side the same exact way. So I got six chains holding this thing in right now. Uh, six chains, 6,500 pounds each. You know how this works. Here's what it looks like from the back going down the road. Did this side just like the other side, outriggers. Got our flags mark, marking the wise portion of the load. That is a good looking load. So this one delivers in Baltimore, not to the port of Baltimore. So this one delivers in Baltimore. We're gonna deliver it Monday morning. Well, <laughs> it'll probably be Monday about lunchtime by the time I get there. But that's no big deal as long as I get there before they close on Monday and get this thing off the trailer because I have a combine that I'm gonna be picking up in New Holland, PA. It's gonna feel really weird for me leaving Baltimore with no load. That's uh, not usually what I do, but um, that's the way this works. So I'm gonna run over New Holland, PA and pick up a combine going right back out to Iowa. So uh, it is what it is. We should get this thing delivered, I'd say probably about noon on Monday. So right now I'm gonna take my happy bud inside, get something to eat, grab a shower and uh, take a little break tonight. Should be an early day tomorrow. Should get home early on a Friday. That's kind of nice. So we will talk to you guys soon. good morning good morning <laughs> so it's Tuesday morning we got that uh, we got the dump truck taken off yesterday and I said in that video that I wanted to talk a little bit about the routing on that thing um, and this may come into play today as well uh, but we're uh, it's Tuesday morning we are currently we got that thing delivered in Baltimore yesterday and ran up here to New Holland PA we're sitting about 10 minutes from our pickup they want me there Oh, they want me there in about a half hour or so so letting ghost do the cool down process and uh, as soon as she, as soon as she's done cooling down we're gonna scoot on over there and go get picked up but uh, what I want to talk about with the routing uh, I brought that articulating dump truck and it was it's about it's pretty much the max that uh, that you can do on six axles in, in this setup that I have, uh, which I'm, I'm pretty light, so uh, I would say it's probably the max that anybody can do on six axles, but uh, it was it was pushing the limits there, weight-wise. Width and height, they're, they're, that doesn't really come into play much, but weight-wise, it was, uh, it was a bit. 
the week before I had done that 9RT tractor with the same exact dimensions, width and height, only it was about 20,000 pounds lighter than the dump truck. And Indiana had, I had asked for the Indiana toll road and on the tractor they gave it to me. On the dump truck they did not. Uh, I don't know why, I'm guessing it's weight, uh, the, the dimensions were exactly the same, so I'm guessing the weight, somewhere in that, that weight range, they don't want us there, so I must have, I must have uh, crossed that threshold, but uh, they didn't give it to me, so they routed me down, uh, when I came into, from Illinois, when I came right into Indiana, uh, there's Route 41, they routed me down 41 off of 80, down 41 to 30, and across 30, and normally I would say, uh, this isn't a big deal, you know, like no, no big deal. Uh, however, <laughs> that section of 30, uh, my permit said it was 124 miles from 41 to 69 where they had me get back on and go north to get up to 20 to come into Ohio. Uh, but it was 124 miles. And when I rounded the clover leaf to get on to 30, or turn a corner, I don't remember which it was. When I, anyways, when I turned that corner uh, to get on 30, it was like a sea of red lights in front of me. So I started counting. Because I'm dumb like that, I don't know. Like, I, so, so truck drivers, sometimes we have nothing better to do, okay? <laughs> sometimes we just don't, we don't have anything better to do. So I started counting these red. There is 68, 68 traffic lights in the 124 mile stretch across there. Now I'm grossing 117, 118,000 pounds. And that's all shopping center. <laughs> there was stretches where uh, it was open a little bit, and we could, you could get around and get you know smooth travel them for a little bit. But then it would go right back into a group of traffic lights where you got traffic coming from everywhere. And I just don't know. I don't know. You would think that Route 80 would be strong enough to handle uh, that kind of weight. It's not really super heavy. Uh, there's plenty of people that haul heavier stuff out there. Um, not really that super heavy, but you would think that it would, Route 80 would have been, 80, 90, uh, would have been strong enough to hold that load. And they routed me down into what was a risky situation for an overdimensional. So my point with all this was just to tell you that it ain't all sunshine and roses. Everybody, uh, the, I get a lot of comments that hauling oversized is, is easy and that's where the money is and you know that's why everybody does it and well first off no not everybody does this but uh it's not all sunshine and roses uh, that 124 miles took me about four hours to get across there not uh, three and a half hours to get across there running through 18 gears trying to slow down and get moving um 117,000 pounds is not simple and when you got to worry about cars and everything else uh, it's high risk high stress you know you're pretty wore out at the end of the day when you're pulling around over dimensional you're doing things like this uh, you're mentally just wore out at the end of the day um, sometimes so that was the point in saying all this um, I, I had got a few comments that you know over dimensional is the way to go and blah 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 but you got to be prepared for uh, what they put us through. Uh, and Ohio is known for it. Ohio is, is absolutely 100% known for routing you into a terrible situation to get you off of a great situation. And there's no reason at all for them to do that. I, 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 they're terrible about it. It's almost like I always joke that, uh, that you know, I got an Ohio permit. And it, 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 it's too easy. So let's route them into some weird place. And that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much what happens. So, uh, I just wanted to bring that up, show you a little clip of what I went through right there. Um, that was, uh, you know, it is what it is. Like we do what we do and, and we, um, we make it happen. But uh, I would have much rather been on a big road doing 65 mile an hour uh, than going through all the traffic lights that day. But uh, this is what happens. This, the, you know, and maybe some of you don't understand what I'm talking about. Uh, when you do an overdimensional load, you get a permit from the state, and I'll put one up so you can see it. There is routing in the permit. They, they tell you wh where you're supposed to go. They tell you what roads to go on um, to accommodate the dimensions that you are currently carrying. So sometimes it's weight. Sometimes there's there's construction, and they don't want you to go through. You know, you can't fit through. Um, 80 is good for that right now in Pennsylvania. 
Uh, there's a couple zones where they're they're taking us around it. Um, sometimes it's height. There's bridges. They don't. You know, you're going to hit it. Obviously, you don't want to do that. So you have to follow the permit route, and um, that's what I'm talking about in here. So the, for those of you that didn't understand what I was talking about, that's what that is. And we are going to. I'd imagine Ghost is just about done cooling down. So we are going to let her idle back down and. We're going to get over there and go get a combine at a new hall in Pennsylvania. We're going to Davenport, Iowa. We got out of Davenport, Iowa, hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow, midday, we're going to get to Davenport. And then I have a short hop wheel loader about 114 miles away. We're going to pick up, run it down to about 140 some miles and deliver it. And that'll get us down by Effingham, Illinois. And then we're going to see what we do from there. So stick around. got loaded this morning I got out of there I got to the job site or I got to the customer at about seven seven o'clock or so got out of there about 9 45 um, we are currently today's been a kind of busy day running and um, trying to get a little bit further make sure I got close enough to get done what I need to do tomorrow um, should be an easier night or easier day tomorrow I hope we'll see what happens but uh, uh, got loaded up. We are currently sitting in Indiana. I ended up routing this thing a little bit goofy. We talked about that. Uh, we talked about the routing from the last one uh, a little bit ago. I ended, ended up routing this one because I just didn't feel like I'd been through Gary, Indiana, that whole area right there so many times in the past couple weeks. It just that's just so it's under construction. It's just a total cluster right there. So I just didn't want to deal with that again uh, this week. So I ended up routing this one across 80, down 71 to 70, through across around Indianapolis, catch 74, and I could take 74 straight into Davenport. So that's the way we routed it. It's about uh, 45 minutes or so further to do that, but um, it just seemed like it probably gonna, even though it's 45 minutes longer by numbers it's probably going to be a lot less time because of the cluster that's going on in gary with all that construction that's going on on 80 294 and all that up there um it'd probably probably be a little bit shorter going this way less time anyway so uh i'm at truck stop now i'm not sure how much i'm going to be able to show you with this load but uh i figured i'd jump out here show you what we got on because tomorrow's probably going to be busy too uh, hopefully I'll be able to film while we're unloading, but we're gonna see what happens and then I got another load I got to pick up right after that. So we'll uh, we'll see how tomorrow goes But I figured I would jump out here Hopefully it's light enough for you to see and show you the load and show you what I did for securement And then I'm a uh, waiting on a shower right now. Looks like I'm fourth in line. Hopefully um, by the time we're done That'll be uh, my shower will be ready. So let's do this All right We are sitting in Spiceland, Spiceland in Indiana. Uh, not too far inside of Indiana on 70, but this is our baby right here. And it's kind of hard to get a good angle right here. This is our baby. It's a Case New Holland 7150 combine. This thing weighs in at about. Uh, 38,000 pounds so we're almost legal I went ahead and permitted a little bit heavy just in case my axles weren't right or whatever the case might be but this is what it looks like from the back we are uh, I think they said it's 26 foot long 26 foot long we're 11 and a half wide we're actually about 11 11 wide 
Um, we went ahead and permitted it at 12 feet and we are legal height, it's 11 six tall. I, I measured it out at the um, chute back there at 13 foot three inches on the trailer. So we're good to go there. Tires are on a, another truck. Gonna be, hopefully they're gonna beat me there tomorrow, but this is going to another facility that has tires. So I don't think it's gonna be a big issue, but even if they aren't there, but um, pretty good load. 38,000 pounds, 26 long, 11, 11 wide, and we are legal height, 13, 13, three. Riding pretty good. So here's what I did for securement. As we know, 36,000 pounds requires half of that in securement to satisfy DOT. So half of 36, we'll call it 38, I think they said it was. Let's call it 40, just to be safe. So we need 20,000 pounds of securement. So what I did here is I wrapped around, wrapped, wrapped around the axle. This chain here, it wraps around and goes across. Did the same thing on the other side, wrapped around coming this way. So that's an X chain, half credit for both of those. And then I added another one here, wrapped around the axle, coming right down to the trailer. Did the same thing on the other side. So that's another chain right there. <coughs> half credit for both of those. So that's another one chain. Got our our signs or our flags on the outside portion. I just ran my, my hook right through the hole there. Got it through the hole, brought it over and then grabbing my chain back here and it's it's holding pretty good. Then I did almost the same, it's pretty much exactly the same thing on the front with my flag. I hooked through the back of the nut that's or bolt that's sticking out there. I wrapped it around, around, wrapped around that and came around front and then hooked to my chain there. And I did, as far as security is concerned, I did the same thing up here that I did back there. I wrapped one around the axle. This got a little bit tricky. I had to um, I had to hook way down low on my chain, as you can see there, to keep this thing, keep this chain inside of this bracket right here so it didn't hurt the bracket at all. Otherwise, if I'd have been, if I'd have tightened this up and put the hook back here, it would have been pulling tight against this bracket and probably would have bent it. So I didn't want to do that. So that's a way to solve that. So I got this one wrapped over, or uh, X chain to the other side, this one pulling backwards, just like we did back there. So we got another two chains worth of securement up here. So total, we got four chains at 6,500 pounds each. That's 26,000 pounds of securement on what is required of probably less than 20, but we're gonna call it 20 just to be safe. So we are in great shape for securement, covered all our bases. It's a good looking load. Been, been a pretty good pull. It took a little bit longer than normal to get them, get it put on a trailer, but it, you know, there's a lot to do when you're loading a combine. They gotta take the axle, take the tires off. This one, they had the duels on, so they had to take the outside off, take the inside off, then put the outside back on so they could drive it around and load it up and then take the outside tire off. So <clears throat> it took a few minutes, but no big deal. It is what it is. I think we can be at delivery in about five and a half hours from where we're at now. Now, the trick there is, and what I was talking about is I got that wheel loader to pick up tomorrow afternoon, and I'm hoping to pick it up tomorrow afternoon. It's 114 miles from my delivery to get to that wheel loader. So what I'm hoping happens here is I can roll out of here at about 6.15 or so. I'm gonna roll out at 6.15, hopefully get up there. We're gonna gain an hour on the way there going in central time. So we should be getting to our delivery with this combine at somewhere around 10:30 ish their time tomorrow morning hopefully it only takes about an hour and a half to get it off the trailer get me out of there by noon that should put me down to my pickup by right around two o'clock they're open until four uh, so that should be real comfortable for me we'll get that thing put on and then that doesn't matter the other end of that it doesn't deliver till thursday morning so as long as i get that thing on the trailer tomorrow it's a 142 mile run to take it to delivery so not very far should be a nice easy run hopefully We'll get it put on, get out of there by three. I'll run it down 120 miles, probably. I'll stop about five o'clock tomorrow evening and have a decent evening and it'd be right up against delivery for that. And hopefully tomorrow, as of right now, I don't have anything booked for tomorrow out of Illinois. We're gonna be down by Effingham, Illinois. I don't have anything booked down there, but hopefully tomorrow morning, I'm gonna look tonight <clears throat> and hopefully tomorrow morning, I'll be able to book something uh, to get me home tomorrow. So 
that's what we got going on last few days so i appreciate everybody watching if you're brand new to the channel thanks for tuning in today if you like what you saw hit that like button maybe consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more uh, uh, for all of you coming back you guys know as i say all the time that you guys are the reason why these uh these videos keep coming i just walked into my flag i thought somebody was standing behind me um you guys are the reason why these uh these videos keep coming so uh, i appreciate the likes the shares the uh the subscriptions that we got going on and uh the channel's growing and it's super exciting so i appreciate everybody watching and until next time everybody stay safe out there